Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here in Farming Simulator 19. Just checking up on our sheep over here. We have got 61 sheeps now. And they're doing alright with food and everything. We don't really need to worry about them. And cleanliness is 97%. I know we've got a little bit down here, but it's, it's not really something we need to worry about. So last week I was asking you all, did you think I should put the sheep pen right here opposite this one? The new big sheep pen that we're going to be getting, which is a little bit more expensive than a standard sheep pen. But it's not too bad. Let's have a look. Uh, $180,000. Well, so, you know, it's a reasonable price. It, it, it It's certainly a reasonable price, at least if you're the one that's doing the selling. Anyway. Um, and $180,000, and it's going to go here somewhere. Now, the thing is, though, with this sheep pen is where exactly I'm going to place it and I want to have a look in here and first well first of all I'm just going to take this one and I said did you want me to put it somewhere around here so that it's the opposite side of the road to the existing sheep pen or did you want me to put it over here a couple of you said that you thought it should be better over here most of you said keep it close to the existing sheep pen keep the sheep together and then put something else out over here. So that's what we'll be doing. We will be putting the sheep pen up here. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I'd like to be able to have a tree or two in the middle of the sheep pen when we place it down. Now, I don't have $180,000 at the moment. I'm not quite sure how I would get... Uh, all I'd like to be able to do is just test it. Right, I just want to be able to take that one and test it just to see how it lines up. But it won't let me do that. It's not an option. Um, I know what I can do a second. If I come out of here and I go left control G like that. And then we go to here. And I activate the extended placeable like that. And then I go back into here. Go to animal pens and go to the chicken coop. Essentially what we'll be doing is we'll be putting, I, I can't put it up on there because it's on the tree, but that's that's kind of what I'm looking at doing, is putting one or two trees in the sheep pen. Now I'm thinking the big trees, we don't want those there, but there's a small tree right there, and then there's a couple more small trees over here. So if I could make it so that those are actually in the sheep pen, I think that would be really quite cool. It would be... Um, somewhere that the sheep would be able to get a little bit of shade, that sort of thing. And I think it could end up looking quite good. So we'd want to clear the tall trees around that area. Um, I'm not quite sure how back, how far back. We're not going to need to do all that many, but we'll want to leave the short trees. I don't want to leave the tall trees in the pen, because that's going to, I think, end up causing us some problems. So if I was to leave that one, that one there, that short one back there, and... Uh, probably that one there then remove these others I'll remove those that tall one there this short one here that's next to this big rock I'll leave that one so I'll take I will take out the really tall trees because those are at risk of falling over and smashing our sheds up and I, I wouldn't really want that I wouldn't really want uh, any trees falling down onto my sheds that's, that's, that's not a good thing um, so that's kind of the plan. I don't know quite when I'm going to be building our new house either. I'm not quite sure about that. That one hasn't turned up yet. But today is going to be a tree felling day. We're going to do a bit of tree felling. I know I've just been talking aimlessly for five minutes. But um, yeah, we're, we are actually going to go and get some work done now. So I'm going to bring this one up through here. And we will go and cut down these tall trees just on this edge so that that's, that, that bit then is done and we don't need to worry about it. I'm going to switch that one on so it's ready to start and where am I going to go? Right, well I'm leaving the, the short trees for now we're leaving and we're going to start taking out these tall ones. So I'll work a little clump of them right here. And if I can get rid of, you know, r remove the tall trees... And then I'm going to have to be very careful about moving stumps and try and make sure that, although it doesn't really matter if we get all the stumps out or not, to be honest. Um, I have got my modified stump grinder. Bring that one onto there. Down you go. Right. So if I 
chop down the tall trees and we remove we just get them over here at the moment like that um, we can then we can lift up these logs we can take them away we can sell them and then we can come back later on and clear all the stumps and then the short trees that are left we'll be able to decide afterwards whether or not we actually do anything with them or if we just leave them as is so we're going to end up with those shortened little bits that are left over. So that tree there in front of us needs to come down. This one here. I think the one next to it, that was one that I said we're going to leave. That one there. That tree there is going to stay. He's a possibly a little bit tall, but I think he should stay anyway. And then we've got some bunch, we've got like a bunch of trees back here that are also really short ones. I'm going to leave those as well. So that one... I'll tell you what, that tree is... Let, let, let's go back over here a bit and take a look. Because I don't want anything that is too ridiculously tall, because it's not going to provide any shade or anything like that for the sheep, and at the same time, it could end up being a bit of a problem. I'll tell you what, that, tri that one is quite tall, really, isn't it? I don't think that's going to be beneficial. I mean, if it was like that one there, it would definitely be beneficial. That, that would be a lot better. But it's not. It's quite tall. So I think we'll actually take that one out. De I mean, I'm, I'm certainly going to take out this one right here in front of me. Let me just zoom out a little bit. There we go. And down it goes. Oop. Steady. Steady. Get carried away here. And that one doesn't want to do it, does it? I'm sure. I'm sure it will be able to here eventually. No, it really, it, re it really doesn't like the... Oh, there we go. Right, I've got it now. There, and go on to there and lift you up. Right, I'm going to just drag this one back a minute. Like that. It's going to sort of twist around and do some strange things. Let's back you up over here. There, and stick it over with the other tree that we've already done. So if I chop that one down to there, let's lift you up a little bit. Right there, and we'll, we'll, yeah, we will take out that one. I know I said initially that I would keep it, but it's too tall. It's, I mean, we've got, we have got one there next to our shed as well, though, haven't we? That one over there, that's, that's a tall tree. Is that as, now I'm torn. Right, well, I'll leave it for, I'll leave it for a minute. We can have a look at it afterwards, and we can see. Um, I'll leave it for a minute. I can I can hear some of you saying yes, get rid of it, and some of you saying no, no, don't get rid of it at all. Um, and and I am I'm unsure about that tree. That that one there, it, it it's it's one of those trees that you sort of think, well, I don't know. I'm I'm really torn. If, you know, if 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 it was like a, a real tree and we knew that it was going to grow, I'd chop the thing down because it's just going to get taller anyway. So I, I would probably just chop it down along with the other tall trees so that we didn't have anything risky there underneath us. But we won't worry about that for a minute. Oh, excuse me. If, if I leave it there for a minute, then we can all, you know, it, it's a lot easier to change our mind and chop it down afterwards than it is to change our mind and grow it back afterwards. All right, growing it back is considerably more difficult than chopping it down later on if we should change our mind. So if I leave it there for now, then at least I've got the option, haven't I? If I if I cut it down right now and then I decide afterwards, you know what, it probably would have been better just leaving it there. It's a bit late by that point. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go on that assumption that it's easier to cut it down later than it is to grow it back. I'll put you over this side. I'll keep dragging them back over to here, I think. And I'm probably going to have to remove a couple of these smaller ones. Either these two sort of right in front of us or the one over here that I'm umming and ahhing about at the moment. We're gonna, we'll end up cutting some of those down, I've no doubt, in order to make room for the big sheep pen. I don't know exactly how big the sheep pen is, though. And we're not going to find out until we've got a spare $180,000 kicking around. Which is not exactly a small sum of money, is it? All right, this is definitely... Oops. Stuck on a rock. No, no, we're all right. We're all right. We can drag it out through here. I'm gonna dump that one down there. And I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna be making a nice bit of money. We've got the wool behind us that's slowly accumulating and making more cash. Uh, we've got this timber right here. Plus, we've got more timber over on the hill that we'll be able to deal with. 
And that's going to get us some more cash. And then we will have a cutting of grass that we can go and do. And I know I was trying to think last week about how I should do the cutting of the grass. Should I do just a small bit or wait until the whole lot is ready to cut? And I'm pretty certain I ultimately decided to go with wait until all of the new grass is on its first growth stage for harvest and then cut the lot. So we got some of it on double harvest, um, which is the, the second growth stage that grass will go to. Someone was asking about this. How do you know when to cut the grass? Someone was talking about and, and asking about this. Um, so if you've got a growth, you've got three harvest stages there, right? And you'll notice that all the grass on the map matches the middle orange one. That's the second harvest stage. Except for that bit of grass there, which matches the first harvest stage. The first harvest stage with grass, you end up getting about 60% of the total yield that you can get for grass. And then the second harvest stage, which is that one, that's 100% yield. Grass will never go to the third harvest stage. So the pale yellow, do it if you need, if you need desperately to get some grass. If, if you need grass and you need it pretty quick, then you go with the pale yellow one. If you don't, if you're not in too much of a hurry, leave it until it goes to this orange, the second stage, and then harvest it and you get the full yield. Um... I'm planning at the moment to cut when, I mean, this will be orange next, but this one here has got a little bit of growing still to do. I think we're on that stage there, second stage. Um, it's got a little bit of growing to go through before it's actually ready to harvest. So we'll see how it's doing. I'll wait until at least that one is light yellow, and obviously this one will be the orange. And then, um, but I might wait for it to go past the yellow stage, and still the whole thing is orange. I'm not quite sure, but that's, that's the difference between them. You've only got two stages for grass when you can actually do the harvesting. It, never, it will never go to a third stage. Right. I'm going to leave the trees for now as they are. I'm not going to do any more to these trees down here because we don't quite know how much space the sheep pen is going to take up. And we're not entirely sure how much we're going to want to be cutting. So I'm going to go back over this side... And we're going to go back to doing our cutting with um, our field here. With it starting out our new field and heading up across. I've got this collection of trees down here next to all of our stuff. And how are we going to do this? I think those two trees... Oh no, I said I was going to leave those two trees. Because of the way that this is going to work out... The way the field is going to come across, it's going to come across here. It's going to sort of go in a straight line. So those trees there don't actually need to be cut. So we can leave those as kind of a bit of shelter. And then I was going to come right the way over to here and head up this way pretty much, wasn't I? I can't see where the rock is there. So if I just go with that like that, and then I can see where the rock is over here. And that's where the big stone is. That's where our big stone is that we're going to want to be working on. And I'm going to want to rotate round a little bit so that I'm actually... We want it to come along there and then it wants to go up there. It sort of wants to be in that line right there. So I'm not looping around that one. So we're pretty much over as far as I want to be with these trees. Although it's not going to hurt to come over a little bit further with the trees... Just chopping down these. So if I was to take down that one, that one, uh, that one there, and then just sort of head right up. I'll do a line up through so that we know where the edge of it is, and then we can start working on the main part. Why did you shut down? Right. So it's these two trees right in front of me that I want to chop down. And then once I've done those two, we'll start working our way up the hill, taking out all the rest of them. Should be reasonably straightforward. Let's take you up like that. Back you go. Right. That's straightforward. Easy enough. Quite simple. And then I can swivel round and take out this tree right beside me right here without having to move, I'm hoping. Although this is a difficult bit because you can never quite see where it is. There. Right. We go like that and then... Oops. 
Okay, I didn't actually mean to cut it then. I meant to bring it in a little bit better. I didn't think it would cut it, to be honest. Never mind. Right, we've chopped that one off. We'll, we'll chop it up and then we will start heading up the hill now. Taking out all the trees as we go. And then after we're done with all of this. So those behind me, they're not going to come into it. Because they're not near where the rock is that we're actually going to be wanting to cut. So I bring that in like that. And I've got this tree right here. That one's got to come out. And I will, once I get up to the stone, I will just double check that there aren't any more that we want to take out. I don't think there are. Looking at the angle of the field behind us, I think we're actually okay with that. And I've just misjudged that um, positioning on there. That one needs to go. There we go. That's better. And now that. And then pass you over that side. Right. And... Somebody was asking, am I going to be doing what I did last time, which is uh, cut down all the trees and then just have a big session with the stump grinder? Or am I going to do it a little bit differently this time and like use the stump grinder periodically? I'm going to take out that one tree there. I think I did say that I was going to take that one out. Um, would I this time be instead using the stump grinder periodically throughout so that I don't have one great big session to do at the end. And this time I'm going to be doing it um, using the stump grinder throughout. We're going to like do, do a little bit so that I don't have a big long dull session of stump grinding, which quite frankly does get rather dull. Quite boring to go and just sit there doing that for absolutely ages. And I'd, I'd kind of like to avoid that this time. So let me bring that back round there. Scramble over that stump. And then swivel you over there. Like that. Something like. Without smashing my cab, it would be a good idea if I didn't have the tree sort of crunching into the side of the glass on my poor little machine here. It's, it's really not going to thank me for things like that, is it? It really isn't. And then we can start heading up the hill. So we've got these two right in front of me that I want to take out. That shouldn't be too tricky. I'm hoping. Uh, ooh. Shit, I managed to get... Look at that! Right onto it. Excellent. I like that. And bring you down over there. And I'm only going to... I'm just going to cut this one sort of strip up through so that we clearly defined where the outside edge of the next field is going to be. And then we can start working our way from here all the way back over to sort of finish everything off. Um, but it could take a little while to get all the rest of the trees. This this bit here is straightforward enough, but there's, there is quite a number of trees between us and the far end. I know that we have already done some vast quantities of trees at this point. We, we really have. We've done really well with the number of trees we've done. We're, let me just bring this out again and check. Right, yeah, I do want to take out that lot. So we're bringing it up here. It's, it's coming along that line to about here and then going up. So possibly I'll go... Actually, I will. I'll go back because it's quite close to the edge there. I'll go back and I'll take that tall tree out there. And then this whole stand of shorter trees right here in front of us. So I'll work on the I'll work on these for a minute, all, the, all of this stand of shorter trees. And then once we've done this bit, we'll go back and we'll get that one tall one further back. He's, he's not actually in the way, but he's quite close to the edge. Well, close-ish to the edge, I suppose. Um, it's just going to bug me. It just looks a little bit out of place, that one tree on its own there. Um, plus, it's quite a tall one, so it's going to have quite a value of timber on it. So I reckon if we go and grab that one and um, add, add it to the totals here. Hang on. Let's back this one down a little bit. And then we can start heading up the hill on this side. Oh, I'm getting stuck on a stump now. Now, bring you down and bring you in like this. Over you go. It's gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna fit. It's, I'm gonna make it fit. It's got to fit. There we go. Excellent. Right, we've got that one. And up. And then over this way. Right. Take that one out and then we can quickly get the rest of them. And then we've got... See, look at these really tall trees that are right next to us. I don't know if we've got any of those weird trees here. Because I'm not... Oh. 
There's the odd point when we're turning round that we're getting some little bits of lag, but not very much really. So I am I'm really wondering if we do have any of those peculiar trees over this side. There may not be any at all. And it's it's kind but then, like I said before, if it doesn't affect the um the Ponzi, if it doesn't actually sort of have any effect on it and it only affects the chainsaw then we're not going to act. We're, we're not going to know at all if we've got one of those trees go, being processed or not. We're, we're going to have no clue if we're actually handling one of those trees or not, because it's not going to affect us. And but it's, uh, if you cut it down with the chainsaw, obviously you can't then go and pick it up with the Ponzi. It's it's you know it's it's done then. It's it's dealt with. It's it's out of the way. It's it's no longer part of the equation. And yeah. So there's no actual way of ever of, of knowing. Well, there is a way of knowing, is if we've got one of the dodgy trees and then we cut it and this one also it behaves very weirdly, then yes, we would know then. But whether or not that has happened, that's that's the bit that I'm unsure of. Now This is definitely behaving slightly weird, because I can't move it forward. Just do it like that and quite sure what that one was doing doing some strange things anyway but yeah it, it wouldn't it's it like it was stuck on an angle on it and it wouldn't let me um fell the tree properly now how much of this clump am i going to want to remove i definitely want to take these two right here i want them out and we've got to remember that the field is going to be coming up to the side of this big stone. I'm not planning to have it wiggling around the edge of the big stone like it did with the other one. Just um, So the big stone is not going to be part way into the field. I just want a straight line on this. Straight up from the bottom, all the way up to the top. Nice and simple, without any complications. So if I can keep it like that, yeah, that would be ideal. Tell you what, I am going to swing this one all the way around over here. Like that. And I will slide it up that way and then start doing this. It's tricky sometimes. It makes it more difficult working on a hill as well. Because we're on the hill right here. Every time I move the camera around. Um like the the camera angle, depending whether you're looking uphill or looking downhill, is, is vastly different. Let's drop that down there. Okay. That's the last one of them. There's one big tree behind me that I wanted to get. I definitely want to go and take that one out a minute and just double check that that is... Um, well, what? no, once I've taken that one out, then we'll double check. We'll, we'll go back to the landscaping bit and we'll just have a quick look. So let's whiz back down here over these really big stumps. Yeah, that's the one there. He, he looks a little bit odd, just kind of left out on his own. And then there's two more down there quite close to the farm, which I think we should take those out as well. So we'll get them to a minute as well. Bring you down. Like that. I'm going to just twist that around a little bit. And there. Okay. That's easy enough. Is this, is this a weird one? I don't know. No, it doesn't seem to be. The way he fell onto the ground, he seems all right. So there's, there's no weirdness yet. That doesn't mean to say that weirdness won't follow us. Weirdness does have a habit of turning up, doesn't it? Just has a habit of just turning up spontaneously without anybody realizing. Straighten you out a little bit. And yes, I am going to go and take those two. Not because I think we're going to need them out for the field at the moment, but because of where they are close to the farm. If I've got these out of the way, then we've got room for, like, putting a barn or something like that over here should we want it. And we could very well want it, because we're going to need space for storing straw. We're going to need space for storing hay. We're going to need space for storing all sorts of things. And I'm pretty sure that just landed on my timber trailer. It's on a timber trailer. It's fine. We can drop it onto that. We just don't want to drop it onto the actual truck. Dropping it on the truck is a bad idea. I said previously that if we ever drop something on the truck or on a vehicle, we would have to pay some money for it. So to be on the safe side, I think it would be prudent if I was to move my truck right back out of the way so I don't drop a tree on it. Because 
It's a very shiny beastie, this one is. And I don't really want it being unshined with something like that landing on the cab. So, let's just... Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll act a little bit sensible with this. Just just a tiny... I know, I know I'm as shocked by this whole Frithgar being sensible thing as you are. It doesn't sit... It, it just doesn't sit comfortably with me either. And I'm going to... Nope. I'm going to bring that back a little bit. And in like that. Down we go. Right. And we've got that one. There. Bam. Start chopping you through. Take that one all out, and then as soon as I've done this, I'm going to jump back into the landscaping thing, well, actually the, the placeable thing, and we're going to just test out whether or not we've actually got everything that we want going up the hill. That's, that's our test that we want to do, so uh, I want to go to decoration like that, there. Right, so up and down the hill, that's fine. We had the two over there, that's fine as well, because the actual edge of the field is going to be sort of down here so i've got plenty of space off to the side of it we're not going to need to do anything else there so those trees can stay where they are that little one there can stay and we're going to sort of take out this clump here probably i'll drift over and take those out as well while we're at it and then that's going to be the full line all the way up across the field we're not going to take any more so i will just remove those so that i'm able to drive up and down with our truck and get through quite handy if we are actually able to squeeze through up there because that truck I need to be able to use that to come up pick up this timber and haul it down the hill and then we'll unload it down there and then we'll load it again into a, a much tidier stack down the bottom and that's what we'll then run over to the sawmill with are you going to be able to get up this hill is this a steep old hill this is like it's surpri surprisingly so. When, it, when you just sort of stood looking at it from down there, it doesn't look too bad. Once you actually get onto it, you start driving up this hill. You start thinking, well, actually, it's, it, there's a bit more to this hill than first meets the eye. You know, th th this is something that's it's going to really test out the, the old horsepower under the bonnet of whatever vehicle we're driving around here with. Let's take you, swing you out over that way a little bit and start dumping the timber down that side. I'll do that with all of it. We've got a few more here. And then, obviously, we've just got those little ones at the top. Take you out like that. Can I reach that next one? I, mean, I might be able to. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you've got just... Just enough reach. There we go. Look at that. Fanschmastic. Okay, we'll pick you up like that. Back you go. And... Boom! First one down. Back over this side. Bit of wheel spin. These tracks... I don't know, I thought these tracks would help me grip a bit better. Sometimes, though, especially on grass, tracks do not help you grip better. They're actually worse. You, you, you tend to slide more with tracks. Although not straight up and down, tracks straight up and down, they provide magnificent and wonderful grip. Sideways on, and it won't simulate that in this game. I know that it doesn't simulate that in this game. But sideways on... Tracks can be pretty lethal, actually, and pretty darn useless. You, um, they, they just slide sideways. I've seen plenty of big excavators trying to go sideways across some grass, and you know, sideways across the hill. It just doesn't work. The, the hill is grassed over, and nope, there is it. It's just not going to happen. It's absolutely not going to happen. They, they sort of get part way along, and then. The whole machine just starts to slide sideways. And there's nothing you can do about it. The only thing you can do when you start to slide in an excavator is swing your bucket around in front of you so that the bucket is in front of you as you go down the hill. It's going to stop you from tipping over, at least that's what you hope. Um, it should do, you know, unless, unless something really bad goes on, unless something really bad happens. Um, just having the bucket facing downhill should be more than enough. You don't really need to worry about anything other than that. Let's just lower that one down a little bit. And there we go. Look at that. Down a bit more. And jobs are good. Over there. That's a big old tree, that is. These pine trees. No, the, the fir tree. These are the fir trees. The Douglas fir, I should probably imagine they are. Um, is it Douglas fir? I think so. 
I'm not entirely sure. Um, it might be Norwegian spruce. Norwegian spruce is the common one that we get in Europe. I don't know about um, the US, though. And then this one here, the, these are the pine trees. And then the other one is... Um, is it is Douglas fir the one that you get like really commonly in the US? Is like I said, we we have Norwegian spruce. That's that's one that is commonly planted throughout the UK. I don't know about the rest of Europe. I can't I can't really speak for the rest of Europe. Norway's probably got one or two of them kicking around. It's got to be said. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not I'm not entirely sure of the names. So you've got the pine trees and then you've got the the fir trees. The fir trees, the tall ones. There's more timber on those than there is on the pine trees. They're, like, the base of them seems to be thicker. And the thicker part seems to go up higher as well. And I don't know if that's an accurate representation of real life or not. I've got no idea on that one. Let's just bring that one over to there. Chop you off of there like that. And back we go. All right. can sit here on top of the rock. That's not going to hurt anything, that isn't. And take these out. So all we got to do is just finish off this little patch here just above the tree harvester. And then we'll start coming through with the timber runner and the truck and start clearing some of these out. So I've got this little patch right in front of me. Plus, I'm actually wanting to remove that lot there. I've got this. Well, I'll take this one out here just for a minute and I'll probably leave a lot of the others. But there's this the whole patch like just above the stone. I don't need to at all. Those could wait until next time, but it kind of like it, it feels right. You look over there, there's like quite a gap between them and the rest of them. So I reckon if I was to just go through and take them out, I, I would certainly feel better about it. And besides which, we'll get a huge pile of money for it. So I think that's what we'll be working on. So in our next episode, we've just about run out of time for today's episode. In the next episode, we will finish just taking out this little stand of trees up here. Then we'll gather up a load of the timber. We'll run it down the bottom of the hill. And then we will load it up for longer distance transport. And we will take it to the mill and we will sell it. So we'll make a pile of money like that. And then... I'm hoping we'll be just about ready to start doing our mowing with our new um, bit of land. So we're going to have quite a lot of mowing that's going to need to be done. And we're going to stick with what we have been doing the last couple of times. And that is just putting the front mower on the tractor with the baler on behind and just let them get on with it. I'm, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I am tempted... To do a proper mowing and raking and everything on the new field. Because we've not worked that field yet. Apart from doing the planting. Um, but not so tempted that I think I'm actually going to do it. I'm thinking that if we just do what we have been doing. And let the tractor carry on. The hired help just carry on. Uh, we can focus on a little bit more of the tree felling. And get this done at the same time. So if we if, two birds with one stone sort of thing. But anyway, we have run out of time, so if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Yes, I'll let you see the final tree. I know there are many of you that don't like it. Goodbye, and see you later.